developing the software and programming the bots and so on. Uh, what, what we're doing was only available to huge corporations with millions of dollars in funding only a few years back. But because we did the research and we found this state-of-the-art software and we have the skill to develop the software, I used to do professional trading back in the 90s, options trading. Uh, and uh, Udova, of course, has done a lot of programming and stuff like that. So by getting our heads together, working as a team, we have come up with the solution. Uh, so the people who come, they're going to have to pay something. And the people who join our community are going to have to pay something. We are not going to give anybody a free ride. Uh, unless you want to become a completely surrendered devotee, a monk. But even then, to join our community, we ask people to donate at least the price of one futures contract, which now has gone up to 3800 and something dollars. Uh, why? Because the income on that one contract will maintain that person indefinitely. Uh, we know how to do this. We figured, that it, we figured it out. So, in the past, uh, in ISKCON, for example, people could just go to the temple. And as long as they were willing to work, and as long as they were willing to follow the local authorities, they could stay there. But we don't accept just anybody. Why? Because we saw in ISKCON that sociopathic people or neurotic people uh, cause so much disturbance, so much problems, especially the so-called leader type people. Um, these people are very strong-minded, very tough-minded people. Uh, they're not open-hearted, they're, they're very selfish, they're greedy, they want power, they want to uh, advance their position at the expense of others. We don't want those kind of people in our group. Uh, in fact, we actively get rid of those kind of people. If someone is, uh, is, is engaging in politics, then we will either correct them or they'll have to leave. That's our policy. Now, we don't take people who are on drugs, who have a history of drug use, or who are taking psychotropic drugs, even prescription medicine psych meds and stuff like that, we don't take that. Why? Because they're high maintenance. They're always a problem. Right now we're a very small group and when our business is not psychotherapy. <laughs> okay? If you want psychotherapy, please see your local counselor. What we do is we're offering an alternative social organization based on spiritual principles that is exactly what the world needs right now. So we need good people, we need strong people, we need open-hearted people, people with good intentions, people with good character, huh? who can take up this knowledge and show a good example of how to put it into practice. This is what the world needs right now, and this is what we are uh, planning to supply. So we have a very successful mission profile here. Uh, the, the last piece of the puzzle that was missing was the fundraising. How are we going to raise the funds to get this thing off the ground? And now we figured that out. So we're actually making a tremendous progress, very, very swift progress, all by the mercy of Krishna. Uh, Krishna and Prabhupada, it's all their mercy. We're not taking credit for being geniuses, except for Uddhava. I told, I told him he's a genius. He's a genius because he figured out, he can figure out all this technical stuff that I don't have patience for anymore. And he can uh, get stuff working and keep it working. And once he gets a hold of a problem, oh boy, he never lets go until it's solved. So uh, these are good qualities that are... Again, they're, they're Krishna's mercy. Uh, but Krishna likes to give his devotees credit. He arranged everything in the battle of Kurukshetra. Yet, he gave Arjuna and Yudhishthira credit. He let uh, Yudhishthira, and actually encouraged Yudhishthira to perform the Rajasuya ceremony and de be declared the emperor of the whole world after the battle of Kurukshetra. So even though Duryodhana and his hundred brothers tried for many, many years 
actually a hundred years to defeat the Pandavas? Huh? Even though at times they had the Pandavas uh, in exile and so many things, they never could perform the Rajasuya sacrifice. So they were never recognized as the actual kings, the actual emperor. Only Yudhishthira and his brothers, because they pleased Krishna. Similarly, there are so many big, big leaders in the world today. Huh? So many political leaders, economic leaders, religious leaders, and so on. And they're all claiming, yes, we're the greatest. Huh? Like Muhammad Ali. I am the greatest. Huh? But what happens? They come for a little while, make some noise, and then they go away. Now that's the material world. Where are all these great leaders now? Where are all these great fighters? Huh? None of them since Arjuna's grandson, Maharaj Pariksit, have been claimed, have been recognized as being the emperor of the world. Huh? But when someone like Srila Prabhupada comes, some great Acharya like that, then it's very easy to recognize that he is the world teacher. He's the world teacher because he's giving the knowledge that the world needs to solve the problems that exist right now. Huh? In, back in the 60s when Srila Prabhupada was preaching, drugs were a big problem. So what did Prabhupada do? He, when, one time when he was in Chicago, he uh, got an interview with the police chief of Chicago. And the police chief came and he sat in Prabhupada's quarters. And Prabhupada told him, we have the solution to crime. Chief Musaki, I think was his name at the time. And so uh, Musaki said, well, uh, that's a big one, you know, what's that? And he says, you have to teach children in the schools to chant the holy name of God. Then they won't take up these drugs and intoxication. They will give up meat eating and they'll become very nice citizens. And of course the chief said, well, you know, that's not realistic. <laughs> it's not realistic. If it's not realistic, then how come we have so many students who have given up me and are chanting the names of God and then have stopped taking drugs and intoxication? Huh? Whatever the Acharya says, if you follow it, you're successful. Try to understand. The Acharya is giving the instructions of Krishna. He's acting as Krishna's spokesman, Krishna's ambassador, Krishna's representative. So if you follow the instructions given by the Acharya, automatically Krishna makes you successful. It's so simple. So we're following Srila Prabhupada's program to create an ashram, a monastery, a spiritual education program, a Varnashram College, a independent, self-sufficient farm program. Huh? And we're going to build this program more and more until it becomes world wide uh, famous and renowned important center of education for sustainable agriculture and this benefits everybody huh? the local people the local government is going to love us because we're bringing foreigners and foreign exchange into the country we're bringing tourists we're increasing the travel we're, we're transportation um, we're uh, going to be developing local facilities for education. Education is very big here in Chile, by the way. The Chileans are very proud of their educational system, and they should be because it's better than it's even better than the U.S., better than most of Europe. Huh? People here are more educated. There are more people speaking English here than in any foreign country I've ever been in. So, uh, if we make an educational institution teaching people how to be self-reliant and like that, oh, the, the, even the government here is going to love it. And we won't have any problems. So we are offering this knowledge because it comes directly from Srila Prabhupada. Uh, we didn't think up this plan. This is not our brain. This is Srila Prabhupada. This is Krishna. Krishna's knowledge is always good because it's transcendental. So it's eternal. It's the absolute truth. Anytime you come to this planet, whether it's in good times or bad, huh, it's good to teach self-reliance, independence, self-sufficiency. 
That means that whatever happens, because in this material world there's always going to be some disturbance. But if you have land, if you have cows, if you have crops, if you're independent, self-reliant, self-sufficient, then whatever happens, you're going to be in better shape than people who are depending on some outside uh, force. That's always going to be true. See? Decentralization is always stronger than centralization. That's why the Internet is made of many, many decentralized nodes. Huh? Uh, you can take out a city with an atomic bomb and the internet will still function. It'll just route around the damage and go another way to, uh, to the target. So similarly, if everyone is raising their own food and some environmental problem happens or some political or economic problem happens, then they will be much better off 